tour of Chalk Talk in the 2012 fall college sailing season. I'm Jay Mackey. And I'm Chris Love. You know, a college membership to U.S. sailing is the same as a full regular membership, except that it covers you for four years at a fraction of the cost. You know, U.S. sailing provides umpire, race management, and sailing instructor training, and it also uh, hosts championships like the Hinman, which is coming up this weekend. But if you want to participate, you've got to be a member. So do it now at ussailing.org slash college. At the Captain Hurst, it was Raul Rios, who we had on the show a few weeks ago, leading his BC Eagles to a victory at Dartmouth. The Stony Book sailed at Treasure Island, the largest regatta of the four with 25 teams competing. UCSB won convincingly in B Division. Hawaii wins by one point in A Division to win the regatta overall. At the Yale Women, it was a wild Sunday with big wind and big waves delaying racing in the afternoon. Uh, Deirdre Lambert from Dartmouth, who was um, such a phenom last year, her freshman year in B Division, is now a sophomore and moves into A Division, leading her team to the win. The Navy Fall managed four races on Saturday in Tough Breeze, but more than made up for it on Sunday with 10 races in each division. The Charleston Cougars took the win by 27 points over Georgetown Hoyers with domination in C Division by Juan Magley. He wins by 29 points over Stanford's Karen Chung. Charleston finishes third in A and B Division and fifth in D. Georgetown's Chris Barnard takes the win in A his teammates 4th in B, 3rd in C, and 4th in D Division. So how do we do in our uh, predictions there, Jane? Well, after Saturday, Chris was in 1st with Charleston, Eric was in 2nd with Georgetown, and I was in 3rd with Yale. Unfortunately for me and Yale, they dropped back to 5th overall, and Chris cruises on into the win with Juan Magley and Charleston. Nice one, Chris. Getting a point on the board. Thank you very much. And to thank Juan for helping me uh, get this win, I decided I'd like to bring him on the show. And Juan, I remember I was there a few years ago um, and interviewed you after you had an incredible performance at that regatta. Uh, and I think I did the math, you actually finished up better this year uh, than you did a few years ago. So congratulations, first of all. Excellent, excellent job. Um, I, how did it feel? What, what did you see out there at Navy? Um, well, it was kind of the same thing uh, as it was a couple of years ago. That was uh, my last time I was sailing lasers at Navy. And um, it was, uh, you know, similar conditions. It was a little bit warmer this time. So uh, I think that helped. Uh, I remember a couple of years ago, it was a really cold regatta. And um, so it helped that it wasn't as cold for me. So just to review, between then and now, that was I think that was fall of 2008, 2009. Um, between then and now, you, you took off two full years at Charleston to go home to Guatemala and train full-time for the Olympics. Um, so just a little bit of review. What, what brought you from Guatemala to Charleston in the first place? Uh, well, I did high school in the U.S. I did my last couple years of high school in uh, Rhode Island and... Uh, well, I always wanted to do college sailing, and I you know, visited Charleston while I was at school, and I loved it, so that's why I ended up here. Um, and then tell us about your, your journey from uh, college sailing back to laser sailing um, to the Olympics. Of course, you, you were in, in the Olympics before you ever started at Charleston, but then back again uh, to London. What, what was that like? Uh, well, that was always my plan. My plan was to do... Um, two years of school and then uh, take two years off so that I could you know, train and, uh, and you know, have a, be, be able to have a good result in London. I think uh, one year wasn't enough to like, do all the, the training that I needed to do, so that's why I took two years off. And um, my last year that I was here in Charleston, I was you know, all doing the college sailing thing, but also training a lot for um, the international uh, laser stuff, which is... I mean, I guess physically it's a little bit tougher, so I was you know, working out a lot and just taking it 
advantage of uh, you know not that I couldn't sail laser, just trying to work out as hard as I could so that I would be fit once I started sailing again. You got to carry the flag for the Parade of Nations. What what was that like? What did that mean to you to to carry the Guatemalan flag? Uh, that was awesome. Uh, that's definitely the best experience in my life so far, and so something I always wanted to do. It was always a dream of mine to uh, not to do that. I uh, you even if it would have been like uh, the Pan Am Games or something. Uh, it's just such an honor to to uh, carry your flag, and I was lucky enough to uh, to do that at the Olympics, which you know, it's. Yeah, it's the best feeling ever. So you're looking at, at graduation in um, just over a year. Um, it sounds like you're back on the Olympic track. What what is your what is your um, sailing aspiration for after college? Um. Well, next semester I'll I'll start doing a lot more laser training and stuff, trying to get ready for for Worlds, which is in November next year. It's a very important event for me. I, I uh, had a really good result at Worlds this year, and kind of my funding depends on uh, how I do at Worlds. So that for the next year, that's my uh, that's my main goal. And uh, well, after that, uh, my main goal. Well, uh, it's obviously Rio. But that was uh, always uh, you know when I started sailing lasers in 2007. That was always uh, the goal, you know, to be able to medal in Rio, and uh, so that's the, that's the plan. Uh, trying to finish the semester early here because I have two full years, but I'm uh, trying to graduate a semester early just so that I can do a little bit more training and you know, take a take advantage of of the time I have. Well, so far it's looking good from here. Um, best of luck to you, and congratulations so far. Well, thank you. Thanks, Juan. Now, Chris, what is that you have there with you? Well, I stayed up all night writing down all the names of the entries for this week's U.S. Sailing Giveaway. For a pair of Hobie Polarized Segundo sunglasses. And uh, got quite a few in here. It's the moment we have all been waiting for. Elliot Close from Western Michigan University. Congratulations. This week, Vineyard Vines brings you the prize. It's your choice of US Sailing tie or US Sailing tote bag. It's free to enter and you only have to do it once to be entered for all of the following drawings for the rest of the season. Go to US Sailing, click Racing, then College, scroll down below the Chalk Talk video and enter your info. Well, it's not the biggest weekend for interconference regattas, but we've got a few for you. The Catherine Hammond at University of Texas. It's got an all CISA roster here, but a pretty good turnout for the district. And they get to sail the new uh, UT boats bought for last year's Spring Nationals. And a couple of NISA favorites. We have the Stu Nelson sailed at MIT for the ladies, sailing in FJs and the infamous carbon fiber tech dinghies. Fully stacked from NISA, and from Mesa, we also have Navy, Columbia, and Cornell joining. Next is the Sherman Hoyt, sailed at Brown in 420s. This is the regatta to watch this weekend for our predictions. It's fully stacked from NASA also. A lot of teams coming up from Mesa, and the only team from SESA to represent is Charleston. Looks like it's going to be pretty good breeze um, on Saturday, lighter on Sunday, and really temperate for this time of year. Okay, so who's it going to be? Charleston coming off that win at Navy. Uh, don't pick Georgetown. They're not going to be here. Uh, but I think my pick is going to be Brown at home. The Hoyt is definitely going to be very competitive this fall. The Shell Trophy is next weekend. It's the only qualifier for uh, the ACCs. The Shell is, I think, schools are going to be sending their top teams. Uh, that being said... I mean, it could be breezy, and it can be a tricky place to sail there off the Edgewood Yacht Club. There's a couple little current spots that are uh, difficult to identify. So, Chris, I'm going to take the home team as well. I think the Brown Bears are going to get it done. They've been right there all season. 
This time I'm going with BC. They've been having a pretty strong season, always a strong competitor. Brown is kind of like their home waters and very practiced in 420s. And you know what? You can actually vote along with us as well. Go along to the Chalk Talk Facebook page, weigh in your vote and get your prediction on the, on the board as well. And finally, it's a big weekend for conference championships. PCCSC sails their men's and women's single hands. And then you've got Mesa, uh, SESA, and MCSA all sailing match race championships. So be on the lookout this weekend for those scores rolling in. That's it for this week. Thanks for watching. And join us again next week to see if Chris can get two predictions right in a row. Good luck to everyone sailing this weekend.